Our project car would crank over, but not start, and while we knew that it had enough power to turn the starter, it's always a good idea when checking any electrical problems by making sure you have a fully charged battery. Place your probes for the multimeter on the positive post, red arrow, and the negative post, yellow arrow, of your battery. You should have between 12.2 and 12.7 volts. This battery is a little on the low side, but acceptable. Next, release the two clips on the fuse relay panel cover, red arrows, and remove it from the vehicle. There should be two spare DME relays, red arrow, in the storage area of the panel. Check with the fuse and relay list and diagram located under the lid and remove the DME relay, red arrow. Gently wiggle and pull the relay up out of its location in the panel. These fit snugly, and if you just grab the relay and pull on it, you may just end up pulling the cover off the relay. On the side of the relay will be a wiring diagram showing the function of the relay. The terminals correspond with the numbers located on the bottom of the relay. The schematics are as follows. 87B, power to fuel pump. 85B, ground from the DME to pick up fuel pump. 87, power to the DME and fuel injectors. 85, ground via DME. 86, ignition switch. And 30 is the battery or the power. The terminals are numbered on the bottom. Next, place your probe on terminal 30, green arrow, and terminal 87, yellow arrow. The resistance should be infinite or a reading of 1 or OL depending on your meter. If this is different reading, the relay contact points are not open and the relay is no good. Next, place your probe on terminal 30, green arrow, and terminal 87, yellow arrow. The resistance, again, should be infinite or a reading of 1 or OL depending on your meter. If it's a different reading than that, the contact points are not open again and the relay is no good. If the readings are correct so far, you are going to need to apply a power source to the relay. The car battery will do. Connect power source across terminals 85B and 87, red arrows, and take a resistance reading across terminal 30 and 87B. The reading should be almost zero or between 0.1 and 0.3 ohms. Now connect the positive side of the power supply to terminal 86, blue arrow, first, and then the negative side of the terminal 85, green arrow. Because of the diode in the circuit, if you install them the other way, electricity will not flow and the relay will not pick up. Place the probes on terminal 30, yellow arrow, and terminal 87, red arrow. The resistance should be close to zero again. If any of these tests fail, the relay is bad and should be replaced. If the relay is good, then your problem lies elsewhere. You can bypass the relay for testing purposes to eliminate the relay completely from your troubleshooting list. Use three pieces of 14 gauge wire along with three male spade connectors. Note this should only be used to test or in an absolute emergency situation. Do not regularly drive your car with this in place. Connect the spade to the end of each wire and then the other ends all together. Make sure the area where they join is safely attached and protected. Insert one spade connector into terminal 87 and the other into 87B, and then lastly the spade into terminal 30, red arrow. You should hear the fuel pump running and be able to start the vehicle with the ignition key. Do not leave these in place as the fuel pump will continue to run and the DME will continue to draw power. This is unsafe and will wear down your battery. If the car will not start with these jump, your problem lies elsewhere. In an absolute roadside emergency, you can wrap a paper clip around terminal 87, 87B, and 30 and reinsert the relay long enough to get the car to a safe location. This is not a substitute for a proper relay, and if you have a paper clip on you, then you should have already had an extra relay or two in the fuse box. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.